Okay, so I've been talking to a lot of new folks, uh, folks new to clicker training, about clicker training recently, and they're like, okay, great, that's wonderful, but like, the next question is, how do I start? Where do I start? What do I teach first? Um, and how do I do this in a way that is not setting my horse up to be like a treat monster? Because that's one of the biggest fears, biggest concerns that I hear from folks when I am introducing the concept of using food rewards to create behaviors is either they've heard someone tell them, never give your horse treats by hand, never hand feed, it's so dangerous, or they have a horse who's muggy and um, has learned to kind of mug pockets or be pushy around food, and they're concerned that that means that now clicker training won't work, right? Because I have a, a cookie monster, this isn't going to work. So I'll show you guys in this video what exactly how I would start with a horse who's never done clicker training before. Um, and we can talk a little bit about like maybe how we'd adjust things if the horse already has some bad, bad manners around food, right? Because a lot of times that's something that we've created uh, accidentally and it is a real concern because they can absolutely become cookie monsters. It can be dangerous. It is something that we need to introduce in a thoughtful way so we avoid those issues. And if you have a cookie monster, I'm gonna show you with my cookie monster in the video today, um, you can absolutely teach them to have appropriate manners around food and um, it will fix a lot of those problems that you're having. So Forrest, who I'll, sh I'll use in my example, he was one, if I had cookies in my pockets, like he would not rest. And he was bloop, 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 pushy, 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 so aggravating. And you know, he wasn't dangerous necessarily because it's just not in his nature, but a different horse with the same uh, thought process around food being in people's pockets could absolutely become dangerous, right? So we want to make sure that we're not inviting that and that we we're fixing it if it's in there already because even if you're not going to clicker train, you don't need a horse who's um, aggressive and inappropriate around food because you have if you're feeding them a meal or whatever. Um, I'm rambling. Let's let's talk about how we'd start. So in order to get started, you just need a couple of things. My first behavior is going to be keep your head in your own personal space bubble. <laughs> or it's just <laughs> not in my tripod. <laughs> so the first behavior is going to be keep your head in your own personal space. Okay, so um, what that requires is a clicker and some kind of food. <laughs> I use hay pellets. This is alfalfa timothy mix. You can use whatever you want, but I use um, hay pellets like most of the time and especially in the beginning, okay? So if you're new to it, a clicker, uh, even if you're not new to it, a clicker is a really great tool. Um, it's gonna make a really sharp, crisp sound and a lot of people are tempted to just say a word or make a noise with their mouth. They don't want to deal with the clicker. Um, this is crisp. It sounds the same every time. It's very clear to a horse who is new to the training. And your timing can be real precise. If you're relying on a or a yes, you got to be, Forrest heard that, you got to be mindful that it's the same every time that it's not a word you're using in casual conversation that can be confusing, that your tone of voice is the same, especially in the beginning when the horse doesn't really know the deal. So this, this cuts down on a lot of that accidental errors that you might be making without even noticing that it's confusing to your horse. So I do recommend a clicker. The first behavior, keep your head in your own personal space. This is it. We're then gonna do targeting. So I'll go ahead and show you guys a target. This one's dirty. This is just a buoy glued to the end of a wooden dowel. Like it can be anything. It's super simple. Um, the one I use most often is like on a little extendable thing from Shauna Karish, but you don't have to buy something. You can make something. Like I've seen people tape a water bottle to the end of a stick or um, <laughs> a pool noodle or like there's all kinds of stuff you could do. So, um, you can be creative. You don't have to go buy stuff if you're not 100% sure, especially. So Forrest is like playing with my uh, tripod. He's ready to go. So let's let's show what this looks like.